Two years ago, I completed my PhD in computer science and decided to land a job in the software industry. And I remember that I started to look at the market, searching for job opportunities on LinkedIn and similar platforms. Three months later, I got my first job offer as a software developer in Stockholm. And part of the preparation before submitting my job applications was making a resume. And looking back, I now realize I could have made a better resume if I had known a few tricks. Because the truth is that you might have spent years in grad school, just like me, collect your diploma and so on. But in the eyes of a hiring manager or recruiter, your resume might not be as great as you think. But no worry, you are not alone. As I said, my first resume was not good at all. And it took me some time to figure out what makes a resume really stand out. So in this video, I will share what I have learned through my own experience after looking at hundreds of resumes and iterating on my own many, many times. And this information could hopefully allow you to avoid making the same mistakes I made. We will dive deep into the purpose of a resume, discuss common pitfalls and explore how to fix them. And I promise you may be surprised but what actually works. So let's dive in. So what is the real purpose of a resume? Well, I think of it like the skill scores of a character in a video game. And in those games, the abilities of your character grow over time through experience. And this experience correlates very well with the number of hours you put into the game. And each basic ability has a different score. And these scores unlock new capabilities like more powerful spells or special techniques that give you some sort of advantage in the game. And in those RPG games, are, as they are called, the goal is to move forward. So there is always a good incentive to escalate to the next level, to upgrade your scores. A resume works the same way. It is a document, physical or digital, that showcases your professional growth and achievements which we can evolve and upgrade over time just as a video game character does. But unlike video games, in the career game, there are not epic enemies to defeat or short battles to win. Instead, it is about acquiring competencies over the course of years. Hard skills, soft skills, getting noticed, securing interviews and eventually landing better jobs. I personally look at resumes as if they were marketing tools. Unlike any good marketing product, they need to be sharp, targeted, and memorable. Which brings us to the next important point in resume building. Targeting. There has been always uh, this dichotomy surrounding the question of what it is actually better either becoming a specialist or a generalist. Like most people, I have my own take on this, and I believe that in the competitive tech industry that we are right now, it is actually not a good idea to become a jack of all trades. Maybe it was a good idea like 50 years ago when uh, there were less technologies out there and a simple person could master most of them. But this is not the case anymore. Today, it is better to focus on a consistent set of related technologies and demonstrate a clear career path. And I think a good resume should reflect exactly that. Like for example, if your area is backend Java development, then you should definitely have a Spring Boot in your resume because Spring is the most popular Java framework for backend development out there. And if you do backend in Python, then you should know about Flash or Django. If you want to focus on the front end instead, then you should know React or Angular. 
which are the most popular front-end technologies today. And on the other hand, if your career path is data science, then you should know about the most popular Python packages for machine learning and data analysis, such as TensorFlow or Keras. The key to building a great resume is to make it easy to associate your name with one of these categories. Because from the perspective of a hiring person, it is difficult to choose someone who mixes different skills. For them, it is about finding the person who can make an immediate impact on a specific project. It is not about listing every single skill you have acquired. And for this, it is important to understand how the hiring process works. Applying to large companies with several screening stages is not the same as applying to a startup with a more straightforward hiring approach. Your resume needs to adapt to these differences. Like for example, applying to a top tech company often requires several rounds of live coding interviews, system design interviews, behavioral interviews, HR interviews, and so on. And all this takes probably months. And the resume is just the entry point in an applicant tracking system. The goal is to make someone pick up your profile from a large pile and start the hiring process. And big companies also value skills in a different way. Like for example, traditional academic degrees and previous experience are more important for them than the number of projects in your portfolio on GitHub, for example. On the other hand, for smaller companies or startups, the hiring process is usually faster because they don't have so many uh, assessment layers. Smaller companies just don't have the time and resources to go through a large process with each candidate. So in this case, they will be looking at resumes that show the most growing potential. Like for example, they will look more at the small projects that you have done and care less about your academic degrees and certifications. So I suggest creating two versions of your resume, targeting two kinds of personas. One for the technical person, focusing on technical skills and accomplishments, and another for HR of large companies with uh, all the necessary keywords and general details to pass through the application tracking systems. So now that you have a clear idea of the purpose and differences between different kinds of resumes, let's focus on how to structure a good one. Presentation and structure are really important. Your resume should be easy to read and well organized. According to several studies, the hiring people spend an average 7.4 seconds skimming a job application. So our task is to ensure that these seconds count. I suggest keeping it simple and readable, preferably using uh, latex. I suggest personalizing your fonts and color to make it unique, but that's it. Here is the structure I suggest. First, you put your name, links to professional profiles like LinkedIn or personal website, and maybe a professional picture on the right side. Uh, second, you put the latest job title or experience that you have. Uh, after that, a summary of unique, ex unique uh, skills or those that are the most relevant to the job that you are applying to. After that, you put your education details, focusing on the latest degree and certifications. And uh, at the end, you can include a very brief uh, section of hobbies or uh, skills that you have outside the job. Uh, because this could add like a human touch in your resume. Maybe the tricky part is to package all of this in no more than one single H4 page. Because no one wants to read pages and pages of what you have done in every single job you have been. So this is important. One page, no more, no less. But 
How can we make this information more interesting? I think of it with a marketing mindset. Treat the resume as a direct commercial proposal where you are the product. So what makes you unique? What can you and only you offer to a company? These are the kind of questions that are very important. So I suggest highlighting that uh, right at the top in the section where you list your unique skills. For example, it could be a research paper you have written, a hackathon competition you won, a popular GitHub project you developed. The takeaway is to put the greatest accomplishments at the top so that the recruiter feels immediately interested in you. And one way to trigger interest is having a cool job title and previous experience. Because as we know, niche jobs usually pay better. To get those, the key is positioning as a specialist in one specific field. Like for example, instead of writing software developer, you can specify something like software developer in the financial sector, or even better, machine learning software engineer specialized in quantitative trading system or something like that. And here's another example. Instead of database developer, you may want to write something like uh, Elasticsearch query optimization specialist. This specialization, Doge, not only makes your resume more polished, but also positions you as a premium candidate in the eyes of a decision maker. So we need to understand that the way we list our skills is actually very important. When it comes to general skills, we need to be very careful. Every developer knows what Git, Docker and Python are, because these are basic tools these days. So I suggest not including them in the resume. It is as if you were a carpenter and uh, put the word uh, hammer in your resume. I mean, of course, as a carpenter, you will know how to use a hammer, right? So instead, I suggest listing only the tools and technologies that set you apart. Like, for example, every developer knows how relational databases uh, work, but not everyone knows how to optimize queries in a particular kind of database or building a specific type of scalable microservice architecture with Kubernetes, for example. These kinds of specialized skills represent a unique knowledge and therefore a unique advantage for you. But be careful with this as well, because you know, an important aspect of the resume is that everything there must be true. This means that if you claim to be an expert in something, make sure you have elements to justify it. Nothing hurts your credibility more than overstating your skills and being unable to demonstrate them in an interview. So get prepared to demonstrate each of them Preferably with the real story of uh, one time when you apply the actual skill and to demonstrate that you actually have the knowledge to apply it again. But technical skills are not enough. Sometimes there are other qualities that could be more or less valuable, depending on the person who is going to go through the recruitment process. I believe the next point is actually by far the most important and yet the more overlooked. I'm referring to personal qualities. They add a special human touch to your resume. It is tempting, for example, to make big claims regarding past achievements. However, humility goes a long way. It is much better to let your achievements speak for themselves and it's possible, including third-party validation. Like for example, testimonials from colleagues or mentors on platforms like uh, LinkedIn are very, very welcome. So it is a very good idea to have those. I also recommend not being shy from mentioning the weaknesses or past mistakes. Like for example, 
I once had a research paper rejected multiple times before it was finally accepted. And sharing this kind of struggle shows perseverance, willingness to learn from mistakes and endurance to just not give up. And these qualities could be very, very appealing to some employers. So, so far I have mentioned it how and what to include in a resume. But uh, it is equally important to know what should not be included there. Let me quickly mention in seven deadly sins of a resume. The first one is using public templates. Your resume should be as unique as you are. A template uh, made resume lacks personality and can blend in with the crowd. It is worth investing some time in making it your own. Second, don't go overboard with pages. Keep it concise. If you have a long list of publications or projects, summarize them and include a link to the full list online. Like for example, I have a personal website where I, had, I save all the things that I want to remember later on. Third, skip the mocks. While they are great for personal growth, they don't carry the same weight as formal education or real-world experience. Keep it simple for the recruiter and focus on what truly matters. Four, avoid being perceived as a generalist. The best way to do so is tailor your resume to the job you are applying for and highlight your specialization. The focus resume stands out more than the jack of all trades approach. Fifth, only mention your highest degree. No one cares about your undergrad if you have already a PhD or a master. And if your university isn't well known, you may want to, you know, skip it. For some jobs, having a PhD may not be that good. So you could be perceived as an overqualified person. So be careful about that as well. And sex, never lie. It is tempting to embellish your experience, but it is definitely not worth it. If you are caught, it could damage your reputation and career. And the seventh thing is, uh, you know, hoping from job to job. Avoid looking like a job hopper. Uh, stability is important to employers. Try to stay in each position for at least three years before moving on. And that's it for the seven scenes that we must definitely avoid when making our resumes. But now a question that comes to my mind. Should we expect that the resumes will stay forever as they are right now? I believe the future is gonna be all about personal digital validation. So let me explain. Imagine two candidates with the same qualification. One shows a great traditional resume with the normal career progression that you may expect. The other has the same career track, but also has a strong online presence with published research, media features, and a large following on LinkedIn. Who do you think has a better chance to get in the job? I think the one with the best personal digital brand is more likely to get the job. And I believe the future of resume is in public, original and valuable content that proves your skills and attracts attention. And I believe that eventually our body of work online will become our resume. So one question for you, are you ready for this? if it happens. I hope you found this video helpful. And remember, your resume is a living document, one that evolves as you do. It is more than just a list of qualification. It is your personal story. So make it a story worth listening to. See you in the next one. Bye.